Hey friends! In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Zebra Funwari brush pen. This is another smaller size brush pen, and I have a few colors to show you as well. So this pen also has a very tiny tip. I would say that it looks more similar to the Tombow Fude pen over the Pentel Touch tip, but honestly, they're so similar that I think I will need to do like an official comparison video between the three markers soon. That way you can kind of see them side by side. I used the cans and marker paper to test out these pens. Now I originally purchased this pen a while ago, but I had only gotten it in gray. So since then I realized that gray isn't always the best to film with because it kind of gets washed out on camera. So when we decided to do the pen a day challenge, I thought that I would grab a few colors to share with you. So these are brand new pens and these particular ones had not been used prior to this. As you can see through the lettering, they have a nice bold black color and because of the small size of the brush tip, you are able to get very thin upstrokes. I'm going to share the color swatches here for you of the colors that I have. I did buy these individually, like not in a pack, so I'm not sure if there are more that I don't have. But one thing that I wanted to say about these brush pens is that they do feel very similar to the Tombow Fude hard tipped pen. Um, especially when I'm first opening them and first using them. I do kind of feel like the gray that I have, um, it's not in this video, but I feel like that one might be a little bit softer. So I think that it might be a matter of them being brand new and then as you use them a little bit, they might get a little bit softer, but honestly I'm not really sure because that's such a small difference that you can feel. Sometimes even when I try different packs of brush pens, they'll feel different depending on the color. So that could just be me or that could just be the gray pen that I have. So let me know in the comments below if you have tried this pen, if yours has gotten softer or if that's happened with other pens or if maybe that's just the particular gray that I have. But in my opinion, on a new pack, they don't feel quite as soft as the Pentel Touch, but again, they may get softer with time. I do think that if you're trying to decide which of these three brush pens to choose, part of your decision might just come down to which colors you prefer, so that's why I think doing a side-by-side -side comparison will be a good idea. I'm not going to go too much into this right now, but I do want to talk a bit about how many brush pens a person really needs towards the end of this video. But first, let me show you the blending test. I tried this first method and honestly didn't get too much blending at all, which is why I was so surprised that the color pickup method did work as well as it did. I was obviously not planning for it to work at all since I chose to write the word nope, but I guess the joke's on me because it actually looked quite pretty in my opinion. Again, like the Tombow Fude pens that I tried, it's not the most bold blending that I've ever seen, but I was actually pretty happy with this method. I would just recommend picking up a new color often and maybe rotating the pen in the color to make sure that you get enough of the color onto all the sides of the tip of the pen. I also tested adding paintbrush full of water to the writing and as you can see, this one definitely was not waterproof. However, since I filmed this, I did find out that I think the black might be a little bit more water resistant. So I'm gonna do another test of the black pen and then of the colors, and I will post that over to Instagram because I haven't yet tested the black pen, but I think that it holds up quite a bit better than the colors because it might be a different kind of ink. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research and test that out. And I will post that over my Instagram feed at How to Hand Letter so you can see that over there. So this is my third day of brush pen reviews for the pen a day challenge. And if you're not sure what that is, I am attempting to review one pen for every day in the month of May. They might not all be coming out on the exact right day. Like this is pen three and it's coming out on the fourth, hopefully. But I'm still hoping to get through all 30 pens, even if it does take me into June or if I have to do like two in one day. I'm hoping that at the end of this challenge, I will have all 30 pens on my channel reviewed for you as a resource. But I wanted to talk to you for a second about how many brush pens you really need. So I thought that I would do that while I show you a bit of lettering using these 1000 plus practice words worksheets for small brush pens, which I will leave a link for in the description box below. So this review and the last two that I've done are all very similar looking brush pens. And I just wanted to clarify before anyone starts thinking that they need a million brush pens, that you don't need all of these brush pens. I am definitely not advocating for you to go out and purchase all three packs of brush pens that are all super, super similar. Yes, there are for sure some differences. Um, some of the main ones are the softness or firmness of the tips and the color options. That being said, this pack is so similar to some of those pens, and I do want to make that clear, and I don't think hand lettering is about having a thousand different types of pens. 
I have said from the beginning that it's not really about the pens that you use, but more about your technique. Of course, it's a little bit about the pens. You can't use a totally awful pen, but there's a lot of options out there, and I don't want anybody to think that you have to get every single one in order to be good at hand lettering. I believe that hand lettering can be done with amazing brush pens or with honestly sometimes terrible ones. I mean, I've seen people hand letter using eyeliner. So this is why on this channel, I have a focus on teaching the how to's behind hand lettering because technique is so important. So please do not take away from this that you need a million brush pens. Before I started this channel, I was very minimalistic in what type of products I bought and that totally worked for me. I had just a handful of different types of brush pens that I tested out and I use them for quite a while, but because I do make lettering worksheets, I like to have a feel for the products that you guys are using. Even when I made these particular 1000 plus words worksheets, I tried them with several different pens and also had some of my Instagram followers product test them with different pens. And you know what? I ended up changing the size because I wanted to make sure that they'd work well for the pens that you most commonly had. So between that and reviewing pens and helping to find tips and tricks for using them with hand lettering so that I can share them here with you, that is why I have such a crazy pen collection. And if collecting pens is your thing, that's awesome too. I just don't want you to feel like I'm saying that buying a ton of products will magically change anything with hand lettering. I hope that these reviews are a good resource for you because that wasn't out there when I started hand lettering and it would have been super helpful for me. I hope that you can see these reviews as a resource and find the pen that would work the absolute best for you or hopefully find something that maybe you were tempted to buy but you realize that it totally won't fit your style. Anyway, I hope that this didn't feel like a rant but I just wanted to put that out there so you guys understand a bit of where I'm coming from and don't feel pressured to purchase things that you don't need. So as you can see on the black marker, I did start to struggle with the upstrokes. I couldn't tell as I was writing if it was frayed or just getting streaky, so I decided to write a bunch more with it, and it seemed to recover, so I'm assuming it was just a bit overworked, or that it didn't like the paper that I had used in my printer for the worksheet. So I hope that this is helpful for you. I will leave a link in the description box below for a blog post that goes along with this video, and I can update over time if this one dried out quickly, or if maybe it was just a fluke. And with that, I will leave you with a blooper because this is just my life when it comes to filming hand lettering videos. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.